<laughs> I'm here with my dear friend, Rabbi Tirza Firestone, Dr. Tirza Firestone. You have so many titles, all have deserved. It is such a pleasure to be with you again, as always. Likewise. And to introduce to all of you uh, the new course that Tears is going to be teaching that I am personally thrilled. And I just told her before we were broadcasting that I'm signing up for the class. And it is on the mystic tree of life, which takes in the template of the tree of life that I discovered part of its majesty when I wrote Anatomy of the Spirit so many years ago. But when you discover a rich truth that you'd never seen before, and then you see it for the first time, it illuminates you in a way, and then that illumination never goes away. <laughs> so when, yeah. And so when I saw this course that you created and that you're incorporating Tarot, I am, I am absolutely on the edge of my seat because that's, part of what my Jungian work. So I am tossing this over to you to um, describe to everybody what inspired it and what the courses are. Okay, thank you. It is a total delight to be with you and with all of you today. Uh, as, I, as we introduce this, uh, this new course, it's a synthesis of things that I love, all with a depth psychological or Jungian perspective. Uh, I think one of the things that I'm most passionate about right now is studying the ancient mystical tools in order to navigate life today. I don't know about you, but this is for me a time of in the world of profound chaos uh, when so many of our of my unquestioned beliefs are are falling asunder, uh, whether we're looking at the calamities, humanitarian calamities in Israel, Gaza, the tragedy of Russia, Ukraine, the political theater in the U.S. Congress, the, the, the earth devastation, all the widespread disillusionment that's happening socially. So what do we do with all of that? My lens, which I am so grateful to have been given in these past years of my, of my adult life and even into my childhood, uh, it has given me a lens, also my more recent research into trauma psychology. And this lens tells me that so much of what we're seeing in the world today is a kind of snowballing effect of unmetabolized, if you will, unprocessed centuries old issues, pain, false belief systems, deferred grief, uh, collective and personal injustices, just life gone out of balance that we have stored from our ancestors down to us as if stored under our own skin uh, in the kind of what I call the cellular memory of our families and our lineages. And then it lands in us and we wonder why we're feeling anxiety. It's not only today, it's also the, in a sense, accrued uh, continuation of so much unprocessed material. So we might wish for all the residue of historical traumas to just evaporate, but it doesn't work that way. The residue persists. It affects us. It affects our health, our joy, our appetite for life, and, and beyond us too, into the world, into future generations, into our kids, into our students. So the good news is that the sages and the mystics of old, of yore, the ancient sages left us maps. They left us maps to navigate wisdom, wisdom templates, if you will, uh, to, to navigate chaos, to navigate times like this. And one such map is the Kabbalistic tree of life, which came down uh, through my own tradition, my own lineage, the the Judaic tradition, the Hebraic tradition for thousands of years, and then was also adopted by Christian Kabbalists, by Rosicrucians, by the alchemists, all the, 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 the uh, esoteric uh, seekers took this map and evolved it. So the tree of life is a template that gives us a system and it's a system by which we remember ourselves, we find our equilibrium, we restore our 
connection to our sacred purpose and and maybe most importantly we restore that that inner channel which is called by many things the the axis mundi that flows through us the axis or the tree the tree that flows through us that is a conduit for what we call in in uh, in kabbalah the shefa elohim the divine abundance that's always pouring down it's like the river that flows from eden that's the biblical metaphor that's given and it helps us to remember who we are as co-creators as healers as transformers as alchemists that can convert the heavy metals of this world into back into the heart back into the heart's wisdom back into our innate birthright so um it's super exciting for me to be here because Caroline also is like me, like uh, we love to synthesize different systems. And and lest we get too heady, um, I wanna say that this course is gonna be full of really luscious graphics, luscious pictures, and um, it, that will bring things to life. I'm very committed to the feminine Kabbalah. I've written, books and and recorded um, series on the feminine on the, a feminine view of the Kabbalah, which simply means it doesn't mean it's only for women, by the way, or or female identified people, but it's uh, it puts it in our body. It embodies it. So it's about the tree of life that lives in our nervous system. It lives in our bodies. and how can we heal our bodies through this through this uh, mysticism? So, um, Let's go, and, and Vince has a, just a few slides today to illustrate. Here is uh, the first one, the tree of life. It's a universal symbol that's embodied the divine feminine. She requires us to joyfully embody the sacred, as I just said. And long before it was a symbol of wholeness in my tradition, in the Hebraic tradition, it was a universal symbol about marrying heaven and earth. So in this graphic, we see this beautiful tree, roots in heaven and roots in earth. We're gonna be working on that, opening up our opening up our apparatus, our innate um, apparatus that, that helps us connect with the unseen world, as well as to ground ourselves in mother earth. It's gonna be a central theme. Um, this tree is the great pillar, the conduit that connects heaven and earth. And she was seen forever, for thousands of years, as the spine or the axis of the world in which all opposites can be neutralized. Um, and and, and it's, it was always believed in all traditions that, that anyone who comes in contact with this tree of life would be made whole because she is running. She is the conduit for all that shefa, that, that divine abundance um, and the eternal life that emanates from her. Okay, let's go to the next one. So um, although the tree of life on such graphics as this one may look flat, and two-dimensional, it is anything but that. It's actually this gorgeous dynamic dance that pulsates with life. If you look closely, you'll see three lines, three vertical uh, lines or columns. The two outer pillars are like the poles of electrical energy that host a constantly moving, balancing and rebalancing current, like an electrical current between them. Now remember, this is in our bodies. And that current comes to full peace for a time. It doesn't stay there, otherwise we'd be dead. At the middle pillar, which is the Kundalini channel, the pillar of equilibrium, what, what we call the pillar of equilibrium, that central place that transcends that dance of opposites. It transcends the dance of opposites that this world is all about, and it connects us to our timeless essence, the timeless essence of life, that stillness. Now, in the Kabbalah, the spherot, the spheres that you see, those circles, are ways of describing God's various qualities and faces and names. And, um, and we, next slide, we're going to be working with our own family trees on the 
Kabbalistic tree of life. We're going to be, uh, we're going to be doing some healing work, some profound healing work, working with our ancestors, working with our families, look, working with all that stuff that came down to us through our families, whether we liked it or not, what drives us, what inspires us, what makes us crazy, <laughs> Uh, the patterns. And so this is really about ancestral healing, but using the tree of life as a template. And that brings us to the next slide, which is a tree of life, but it's it brings us to the tarot, which many of you who are listening have used, I'm sure, or at least have heard of. And there are many versions, there are many decks. We're going to use the classic deck, which is uh, called the Rider Waite deck or the Waite Smith deck because Smith was the incredible Kabbalistic painter or artist. Um, full. This deck is full of Kabbalistic imagery and significance, and we're going to be working primarily with the twenty-two major arcana, not com not not exclusively, but mostly. And those cards, I'll show a few in just a moment. They're going to help us to visually pop this this seemingly two-dimensional thing and bring it to life because the tarot, the 22 major arcana show the archetypal stations on the journey uh, of life, on the hero's journey, on the journey of, of balancing our roots in heaven and our roots in earth. Let's take a look at a few of them. So here we have one of my favorites, uh, the world you see there is, um, she's surrounded by four figures in the corner that come from Ezekiel's vision. We'll talk about all of that. She is the anima mundi, the world soul. And she's going to be speaking to us. <laughs> Next slide. Uh, just look at this card. Is All of these are Rorschachs, right? They're just Rorschachs. They're, we know this deep experience. It's happening in the world now. It happened on 9-11, it is happening again. The collective experience that we are going through is the tower experience when the, the constructs, the psychological constructs, the edifices and the institutions of our society are beginning to crumble. Uh, the crown is coming off. The misguiding mythic systems are, are like no longer no longer holding and so people are falling there's pain and you see again with a kabbalistic eye you can see that there are little yellow i don't know what to call those smudges <laughs> they look like little smudges or raindrops big raindrops falling uh, from the clouds underneath the bolts of lightning those are actually one of the most powerful hebrew letters the yud which is, those are, those are God's hand. Uh, the Yad, the Yud means hand, a divine hand. So these are not random things that are happening in the world. Um, we'll go to the next one. All of this, these are just little tastes, little appetizer teasers. This is the justice, the, the, the force within our beings of which the world is in short order. Let's just leave it at that. And next slide, of course, our favorite. <laughs> we'll be asking in this course, what bedevils us? What bedevils our society? And and in ter in more botanical terms, where where are the noxious, the poison weeds, the poison roots at the root of our family tree? What has what has where have we gotten addicted? Where have we lost our way? Where have we listened to the wrong to that has enchained us? You see this, this we can we could do a whole course on this, a whole class on this one, on this one. And we will be looking at what where these bedevilments are in our family trees. And next slide. We're also going to be tapping the deep inherent strength of our wise and well ancestors. Uh, so much here that is powerful and Kabbalistic. Just notice for now the crown above her head, the, uh, the, the figure eight sign. There's a beautiful crown that connects this anima figure with eternity. And next slide. 
And you see it again above the head of the magician, who again is an archetype that lives within us that we are going to be tapping. This transformative power uh, that we can, can tap through imaginal exercises that I'm going to be leading you on to tap ancestral guidance and our own healing power. And all of these images, we'll go to the next one, are imbued with Kabbalistic symbols. I'm excited to share these with you. Here is the female form of, of the magician. You see that she's carrying the Torah in her arms, in her hands. She has the, the cross, the infinite cross of uh, the nexus of time and space on her chest. Look at her crown. Look at the pillars. All of this is going to be uh, elucidating our journey. And that's our appetizer. That's our teaser <laughs> well, um, for today. But uh, it's going to be pretty, pretty delicious. I'm so excited. Well, you know, as you talk about the tree of life, I want to emphasize again that when I realized how it mapped, it existed within us. It wasn't just a scriptural teaching. It was actually identifying the um, profound cosmic resources that every human being is meant to activate. Exactly. Within themselves in order to thrive as a tree of life, in order for their tree, for their life to thrive. I, I, I cannot tell you how awesome I found that. Yes, and that's what we're gonna be focusing on is how do we activate the spherote, which is really a chakra system. Uh, right. uh, these are, these are uh, we're born, we have a birthright to activate these, but we have to know, we have to know the science, we have to know how to activate them and, for what for what purpose right and, yeah it's and, and you know and i this is no time we'll talk more about this when we get to class but i think this is where the whole history of sacred rituals sacraments these holy rituals were all about the activation of these power centers in us that's right you're reminding me of something that's really important that Toward the end of the course, we're actually going to be doing rituals in nature. Of course, this is optional because we, we can't go out into nature together online. But the tree is actually trees in nature. And we can they, they help us activate our, our nervous system body tree. So we're going to be doing some, uh, that's, you know, it's optional. But to do some powerful earth rituals uh, between... Um, module five and six, and then share, share about what happened. And um, anyway, all of this is thrilling. Well, no, we'll, we'll leave it at this, but, uh, but we are creatures of ritual. We can't stop ritualing at all. Whether we, it's the way we make our breakfast, the way we, this with the way we sit at our desk, I've got to have this here. I've got to have that here. We always do these rituals, the unconscious, the way we, we have to get up in the morning and brush our teeth first, and then we get our coffee. And however it is we organize, that's yes. the ritual. And everything is about the organization of power in our life. Mm. So mm. that we don't hemorrhage our power to mm. what's ever coming at us in the outside world. Yeah, I call that psychic energy. Yeah, uh, It's the divine abundance that's flowing through us. How do we modulate it? How do we yeah. use it? Uh, how do we, how do we become aware of it? How do we name it? How do yeah. we know what's flowing through us or when we're hemorrhaging it and why? That's right. You know, how do so we name it? Okay, so that actually takes us, I don't know, if that, I, I'm jumping the gun here a little bit, but um, that is really, the, that's the first module is how do we name it? And uh, the first module I entitle, what's the name of your God? And have you heard from him? <laughs> Have you heard from her lately? Yeah. <laughs> how do we open the, how do we turn on that, that's that, that switch Precise. that opens the channel uh, that we all have inside right. of us. So that, so that the subject matter goes from what you hear to that mystical, what are you experiencing? Beautiful. So, well, 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this delicious introduction. I can't wait for this course to begin, which it does March 19th. Right. And it's a, um, it'll start noon central time. So that's one o'clock Eastern time, 11 o'clock mountain time, 10 o'clock Pacific time. And I have no idea what the European calendar is, but, or time zone, but I am so thrilled to have this course. I'm telling you, Tirza, well done. I am too. Uh, I'm I'm really really exciting excited because it, I get to it, it it elevates me as I teach and as I synthesize this material and um, and as we all of us tap the connection the deep connection to this divine abundance this these this apparatus within us, but also to the ancestors. We're going to be doing a lot of work in the imaginal realm to activate and listen to, to receive. That's what Kabbalah means. Kabbalah means the receiving. We're going to be receiving new downloads, spiritual downloads from our, our allies, our elders, our, our uh, ancestors, and doing a lot of healing work. You know what occurred to me as a, as a closing remark when you were talking about that earlier in this presentation? about Ancestor.com and how Ancestry.com, so many people are seeking their ancestry, seeking their roots, looking. And when I saw that one illustration of all those people jammed into the tree of life, <laughs> that, that, that's exactly, people are looking for their roots. They're that's looking right. for their history. They're looking for that. And this is, this is the cosmic level of that. That's right. That's right. It's, it's, it's healing the, the, the the historical traumas that came down through our people, but it's also so much more connecting to the positive life giving roots that are that we all have. We may not know those ancestors. We may never have known them. We may think our our families are the most neurotic families in the world, but each of us has this deep wisdom uh, that we can connect with. And I I do want to say one more thing. This is a spring course, at least in the northern yes. hemisphere. I guess for those of us uh, who are living in below the equator and you know coming to us from Australia or New Zealand, it's got you're you know you're but you're in the fall equinox, the autumn equinox. But this is at the you know we're starting just at the tipping point of the new season, and that's so thrilling. And it's a it's a great way to uh, refresh ourselves, to renew ourselves, and bring in the new season. Well, thank you, my dear. I'll see you in a few weeks. And thank you, everybody. Please join us for this wonderful class. Go to mace.com, myss.com, sign up, and we will see you on March 19th. Thanks, Carolyn. Thank you, Tirza. <laughs>